I'm Phil Westmoreland, 2013 president of AICHE. With me is Pablo de Benedetti of Princeton University. He's this year's the 65th AICHE lecturer, the Institute lecturer. He's going to be speaking on theory and computation in modern chemical engineering, a thermodynamicist perspective. And we're delighted to have him doing that. We've known each other a long time. I've known his work and admired his work for a long time as well. Pablo, could you start by summarizing your talk and the sort of perspective you're going to be giving? Sure. So in my talk, what I'll try to do is to illustrate, rather than be comprehensive, to provide illustrative examples of how modern computational tools enable chemical engineers to tackle really challenging problems that have both a scientific interest and a practical application. That's going to be the theme throughout. Can you talk about how your perspective shapes that, your background in particular? Yes. So uh, I was a graduate student. My advisor, Bob Reed, always stressed the fundamentals. And I always like to, when I tackle a problem, to feel first comfortable with the fundamentals. It's often the most difficult thing. Uh, but it's especially important in thermodynamics. So I tried to seek a balance between problems that appeal to my wish to uncover new knowledge, but that also have a broader significance for the public and for society. Well, that, that's very interesting. It leads to me my, to my next question, that this work is of great intellectual interest, mm -hmm. and yet chemical engineers want to see that their work has an impact on the public, on our own lives, mm -hmm. on the quality of mm -hmm. life, mm -hmm. as well as on technology. Could you expand on what you were just saying? So I'll give you two examples. I'll, I'll present several examples throughout my talk. Um, one of them, the very first example, is on protein hydration. And this work is motivated by interactions I have with industry. Uh, where you worry about protein hydration, especially for in the personal care industry, where you worry about dryness of hair or dryness of skin, and what does it do to proteins, uh, and how to prevent it. And also in the pharmaceutical industry, where you worry about protein hydration in terms of how you store proteins and preserve them for prolonged biological activity. So I find it very satisfying and I'll give other examples, to be able to work in problems that both appeal to my intellect and have immediate impact in terms of what users seek in terms of improved product formulations. Thanks. One, one area of that sort of idea on uh, the use of computation in particular that I'd like to ask you about is more from the educational side. And indeed, we are students all our lives learning. But current students, uh, undergraduate and graduate students, can be very effective at using codes. There's less knowledge of what's going on underneath the interface. Yeah. In many cases, uh, certainly we want students who can use codes very effectively. We don't want to give that up. It seems to me that we also want to have more understanding, if not of writing those codes, at least of what's going on. Talk about how that, uh, your perspective yeah. on whether that's useful or what balance we should strike. That, that's a very good question. In my research career, my philosophy has been that I want all of my students to develop their own codes, at least for one problem. Maybe it's a warm up problem before they start using available code. Because if you start using available code, you have no idea of what's in between, what's beneath the code, and then you develop a trend to, or a tendency to uh, formulate the problems that you can solve based on what the existing code can do. It's only by writing your own code at least once for a significant problem that you can develop the confidence and understanding what existing software can do. So I know, you work, I know you work with graduate students and with uh, advanced undergraduate students yes. as well in this way. What about the general undergraduate student who's not? Well, I, I have, for example, right now I have uh, a couple of undergraduates working in my lab. So what I do, I start them, I start them by having them use existing code. Uh, because if I demanded that they start writing their code, the project wouldn't get started. Um, but I insist that they understand 
the fundamentals of what they're doing. So with undergraduate students, I, I break the rule in the sense that I, I don't expect them to write their own code, but at least I insist very strongly on them not simply presenting results, but understanding the physical meaning of the results. But with graduate students, it's very important, in my opinion, that they develop an ability to write their own code before they start using existing code. I think that creative tension is, uh, comes out very strongly in the title of your talk. So again, Pablo is the 65th Institute lecturer. His talk is going to be on theory and computation in modern chemical engineering, a thermodynamicist perspective. Thank you, Pablo. Thank you. Thank you very much.